look at 1099s today, uh, specifically creating 1099s with uh, QuickBooks. QuickBooks really makes an easy job of it. So if it's something that you've struggled with before, or maybe you haven't created 1099s before, but you're wondering about it, I think QuickBooks can really make the job easy for you. Just in case you're not familiar with 1099s, let's do a little bit of an explanation first. A 1099 is an IRS required form that I'm going to send to anyone that I purchased services from, that I as a business purchased services from. So if I paid someone for repairs, if I paid someone as a subcontractor, these people are not employees, the, the electrician, the plumber, the cleaning people, those kinds of people will get a 1099. Perhaps uh, a repair person would be a good example. I might pay them for both parts and for labor in the course of one repair. I don't need to separate those amounts out. If I create the 1099 for the entire amount I paid them, that's fine. Corporations are an exception. I do not need to send a corporation a 1099. Now, that all that said, there are different kinds of 1099s. There's a whole slew of them. But generally, 1099 miscellaneous, which you can see right here, this form on the screen, that's generally what we're talking about for small businesses. That's the one that they usually need to send. And while the form looks pretty complicated here, uh, you know, QuickBooks is going to fill all that in for you. So you, you just kind of need a basic understanding of what a 1099 is. Most of the amounts that we did, 95 percent of the time, the amounts are going to go in this box seven, non-employee compensation. That's someone I'm paying for services. Now, I need that vendor's name and address. I also need a tax uh, ID number. And IRS also puts out a form, and you can get these forms uh, on the uh, irs.gov website, by the way. Uh, the form for getting vendor information, if I choose to use this, is a W-9. I can fill in some of the business information and send it to them. The, the main thing I want to get is I want to get this tax ID uh, information here. Uh, business name needs an employer identification number. An individual's name needs a social security number. If you wait too late in the year, sometimes it can be difficult to get. Small, especially some certain individuals will resist giving you that tax ID number because they know without it, you probably won't file a 1099. Their income won't be reported to the IRS. Therefore, they'll choose not to report it on their income tax return, and the chances of getting caught are probably small. You, however, are required to send the 1099, uh, and the penalties are substantial for not doing that. So you, you do want to do your due diligence here. You want to get the information from the vendor just just to give you an example of how important uh, this is for some people, I know several people that do this, but I'm a good example where I have uh, spoken about QuickBooks or I have uh, taught classes. Different organizations have hired me to do a series of classes or just you know, one class at a certain location, something like that. And it, without fail, every time I'm hired by somebody to do that, I don't get paid until I have turned in this W-9 with that tax ID information on there. They really want to be sure that they have that. And it's a good idea. I, I mean, I totally support them in that. So let's look at QuickBooks. Just, uh, just to give you a little more information here, this is in the vendor center and editing a certain vendor on this tax settings tab right here. This is where QuickBooks stores the information. Here is the tax ID number, and here's the check marks. So we've marked that as this vendor might need a 1099, and we don't know what the amounts are, and we don't have to send a 1099 if we've spent less than $600 over the course of the year, but we don't need to worry about the $600. QuickBooks can do that math. Just this vendor may need a 1099 because we purchase services from them, and they're not a corporation. Uh, I wanted to show you that so you would know where it was. However, don't, uh, at the end of the year, start going through every vendor on your uh, in your vendor center there looking to see if you have that tax ID number. Because the 1099 wizard, which is a great tool, 
came out in 2012 and uh, been very pleased with that. It was a great improvement over what we had before. That wizard is going to help you in that process a lot easier than going through vendor by vendor in the vendor center. So I'm going to go to vendors. I'm going to go to print e-file 1099s, and then I'm going to choose 1099 wizard. Uh, here are the steps that the wizard is going to take. I'm going to choose get started. And here is this is actually a list of all of our vendors. But those that have already been marked, already have the checkbox that says they are eligible for a 1099, those appear at the top of the list. It would be a good idea when it comes time to do 1099s to review the rest of this list and make sure that there's not somebody here that maybe was new or we hadn't used for a long time. Something, someone's going to ring a bell here. Like, let's say this galleon masonry, yeah, you know, we know that we, we paid them something this year. And that should have been a 1099. I'll click that checkbox. And then when I click continue, on this list, I get all of the vendors from the previous screen that were marked as 1099 vendors. Okay, the others, I don't have any more, but these I do. And you can see that there's this red square here. So QuickBooks is telling me there's no tax ID number for this vendor. If I get that, Fortunately, I don't have to go back to the vendor center to put that in. I can do it from right here. And when I complete the wizard, or let's say I stop somewhere in the middle and I need to come back later, if I click Save and Close, QuickBooks will save whatever information I have put into this screen into the vendor record so that that information is there. It's there permanently which are really nice. The, uh, I'll get the same thing, this red square. If I have a missing address, something like that, I will have uh, over here on this field. So QuickBooks helps me make sure that I have all the information I need to create the 1099. So let's click, uh, let's click Continue. These are accounts from my chart of accounts. QuickBooks looks and says, what accounts did you use with these vendors? Here they are. Which ones do you want to include on the 1099 and which box should they go in? Now, remember I told you that 90, 95% of what small businesses report is going to be in box seven because it's going to be payment for services. The second most likely occurrence, which is like less than 5% of the time, is rent, that you paid an individual rent as a business and rent goes in box one. And the reason that that's significant is because income that is received as um, income for uh, services is taxed differently than income that is received as rent. And so IRS has to know if that's income for services, non-employee services, or if it's for rent. Okay, so what do we have here? We have repairs, definitely a 1099 category, and that's already marked for box seven, that's good. Subcontractors, same thing, definitely a 1099 category, that's also marked as box seven. Job materials, so maybe there's a vendor, they've been marked as 1099, but I only bought materials from them. So I, I'm not gonna include that on the 1099. The, that vendor may not be getting a 1099 if all I bought was materials from them. And uh, so maybe we have a delivery charge in this top one here. I will go ahead and I'll add that to box seven. All right. Continue. Now, this is an interesting screen. Uh, view included payments, view excluded payments. And I wanted to look at this because there's another little lesson here as far as 1099s go. If I click on this report, view excluded payments, Remember, there was that galleon masonry, and in the first screen, uh, it was not marked as a 1099 vendor, but I knew it was. I knew we had purchased from them. I knew it was services, and so I marked them as they should be included for 1099. So why are they here? Why are they on a report that says excluded? If you look at the number here, this is a check transaction, and the number is DBT. By using that abbreviation, I've told QuickBooks I paid for this with a debit card. 
any payments that go through a third party payment processor like credit cards, debit cards, PayPal, those are probably the top three right there. We do not issue a 1099 for those. And the reason being is payment processors also are required to issue 1099s. So if they process payments for Galleon Masonry and they send Galleon Masonry a 1099 for the payments they processed for them, that $1,000 is gonna be included on that 1099. So we don't wanna include it on ours because it would be double, double reported to the IRS for that vendor. So that's, you know, if you use the credit card feature in QuickBooks, you will not find any credit card transactions on the 1099 reports. None of those are going to be included for 1099s. The debit cards are a little more difficult because we usually use a check form for them. So there are certain abbreviations, DBT, spelling out the word debit. I think there's some more in the QuickBooks help file. But if you use either one of those, you'll be fine. QuickBooks will know it's a debit card transaction. Don't include it on the 1099. Okay, so let's go ahead and click continue here. So here's a summary of what uh, QuickBooks is finding as far as what we need for 1099s. And you can see the top couple of rows there. We must have had some kind of activity with CU Electric and Larson Flooring, both marked as 1099 vendors, but it's not resulting in a 1099. So we don't have $600 worth of uh, reportable payments for either of those vendors. The next two, Middlefield Drywall and Voo Contracting, those are going to create the 1099 forms and uh, the amounts are there, all that looks good. Let's click continue. You can e-file 1099s if you like, there's an extra fee uh, from QuickBooks for that. You can print as long as you have the forms. Uh, when I click on print, the default will be last calendar year. We're usually doing this in January for the previous year. And in the sample file, the previous year is 2022. There are the two vendors that will print. We can preview the 1099. It comes up on my other monitor. So bear with me a second here. And let me pull that over so you can get a look at it. So obviously, just like I've been saying, it prints on a form. You know, there's no lines or no form here, but these will these all these pieces of information will print in the right place. Uh, an interesting point here is that this is our middle field drywall uh, 1099. Uh, you can see it says John Smith. So you know when you create a vendor, you create a vendor name, and then there are those fields for first name, last name, which we usually don't use. They're optional. In this case. I used that for setting up that vendor because what I have for this vendor is the owner's social security number. And I have to match a social security number with an individual's name. Okay, if I have like a tax ID number, let me just pull down here to give you another example. So here's a tax ID number. It's not a social security number. It goes with a business name. So if I have John Smith here with a number in this format, that's going to be an error. The IRS computers are not going to match that number and that name, and they're going to notify me of that, and at the very least expect me to correct it for the future. So that's why I want, since, since the number that he gave me for Middlefield Drywall was a Social Security number, then I need his individual name in order to print that on the 1099. That will match. So I won't have any problem with either of these 1099s. Uh, the IRS, they will match in the IRS computers. It should be fine. So just, if you can, review those 1099s. Make sure you have that, that matched up right as far as number and uh, name, and life will be much simpler. There's one other form called the 1096. Really nothing you need to do for this form. It put in a contact name, maybe. And again, we'll preview that, but it comes up on my other monitor. There's not much to it. This is just a summary form of the batch of 1099s that I'm sending in. QuickBooks totals that. You know, all these pieces of information go in the right place. All this information is in QuickBooks already. I just wanted to show you that you will need this form as well. So you have a batch of 1099s to send to the IRS. This 
If you uh, buy the 1099 forms from the office supply store, any packages of 1099 forms are also going to include a couple of 1096 forms as well. QuickBooks will print that. It has all the information, nothing you need to add. Just print that to go with the 1099s. And there you go. That's all there is to it. The hardest part is getting the information together. Start early. Try to make sure you have those tax ID numbers. Once you have the information for the vendors in QuickBooks, the rest of it is pretty much a slam dunk, and you can print those 1099s and get those mailed off on time. So I hope that was helpful, and good luck with those 1099 forms.